Hey, what's up internet? I'm Joey, and today I wanna to show you how to build a custom PFSense router for your home or your small business. So today we're gonna to use a free software called PFSense and around $300 in computer components. And speaking of components, let's check these out. So it's a pretty big router. In my use case, I needed something that was rack mountable. So I was actually able to find a custom case from a company called P-Link. And this model in particular is the P-Link short ITX chassis. It's about 10 inches deep. It's, it's 1U, it's small, and it pretty much fit the bill for what I needed. So P-Link offers customization options on top of the base price of the case. So for $5 more, you can actually put all the power buttons and LEDs on the rear of the case which is something that I needed to do because I wanted to mount this case rear facing so that I could access all of the IO from the back. On top of that, they also offer power supplies. So I went ahead and chose a Seasonic 250 watt power supply. And what's great about all of it is it all came pre-assembled. So thanks P-Link, that was, that was awesome. So being an ITX case and a router, I wanted to find a motherboard that had dual ethernet on it, which is kind of a large ask for an ITX board, believe it or not. But I was able to find the ASRock H370M ITX. It's a socket 1151 motherboard and it offers dual Intel gigabit LAN, which I prefer. I'm, I'm an Intel guy when it comes to NICs, especially for PFSense. I've, I've found Broadcom and Realtek ones to be problematic in some scenarios. For the CPU, I went with the Intel Pentium G5400. This is a two core, four thread CPU that runs at 3.7 gigahertz and has a TDP of 58 watts. 58 watts is kind of high for a router, but at $60, this is really tough to beat. For RAM and storage, I went with eight gigabytes of DDR4 by Kingston HyperX and a 256 gigabyte Western Digital Black NVMe drive. Building custom in a 1U chassis can have some challenges. For me, it was cooling. The standard Intel CPU cooler will not fit in a 1U chassis, and most CPU coolers won't. So what you need to do is you actually need to go out, do some research, and find low profile CPU coolers. I found the Silverstone NT07. This is a low profile CPU cooler that claims to cool up to 65 watts, and doesn't break the bank at under $30. One of the other challenges in building in a 1U case is the I.O. shield. So your standard ATX I.O. shield that you always forget to put in your PC before you build it doesn't fit in a 1U case. P-Link offers custom I.O. shields for various motherboards. This was not one of them, but they do have a DIY I.O. shield that they'll send out to you and you can cut it for your various I.O. I'm pretty good with tools, so I decided to just cut and grind mine to fit. So without further ado, let's build this. I went ahead and pre-installed the CPU and CPU cooler to save some time. Here I am installing the NVMe drive and the RAM. Here you can see the modified I.O. shield fits perfectly and we'll go ahead and start by installing the motherboard. Now that the motherboard's secure, we can start with our cables. Cable management can be a little tricky in a 1U chassis. Since I'm mounting this rear facing, I'm not going to be using the front I.O. connections, so I'm just going to tuck those cables away. We'll start with our 8-pin CPU connector. Then goes the 24-pin motherboard connector. Then finally, the fan header on this case uses a standard Molex power connector. One thing I did notice is that the cables for the rear I.O. that P-Link installed are extremely long, so I'm going to go ahead and zip tie these up. Now 
Here we'll go ahead and plug in the power and reset buttons as well as the power and hard drive LED. I want to add an additional network card to this build in the future, so I went ahead and purchased a PCI Express ribbon cable. So that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and button this up and move forward with the install of PFSense. First you'll need to create a bootable USB with PFSense on it. There'll be a link in the description to show you how to do this. Go ahead and boot from USB and you'll be presented with the option to install PFSense. Accept the user agreement. Choose install PFSense. The language of your choice. I use the guided disk setup and I also select the entire disk. Finally select your drive and select finish. After the install is complete, go ahead and select Reboot. Once it's done booting, you'll be presented with a prompt like this. We'll type N for No for VLANs. For the WAN interface, we'll go ahead and use A for Auto Detection. This is the interface that will be connected to your ISP's modem. After the selection, go ahead and plug in your modem. Next is your LAN connection. This is your internal network. On this router, I know there's only two interfaces, so I'm just going to type the one we didn't use before, so that's IGB0. Y to proceed. Now that PFSense has its interfaces, it'll go ahead and continue the boot process. Once PFSense is fully booted, you'll be presented with a LAN IP. Go ahead and connect a system to the LAN port. Hop on Chrome and enter the LAN IP. Accept the security. The default password is admin and pfsense. Go ahead and click next. And then next. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the host name, domain, and all this default. So go ahead and click next. Time server, I'm currently in the America Denver time zone. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Here you have different options for your WAN interface. I decided that for this tutorial, I was just going to do a standard DHCP, but there's other options like PPPoE, which will allow you to connect to a router in modem mode. The LAN IP address, I also left the same, but you can change this to whatever you want. Next, you can set the admin password and finally reload. And after a while, it will finally allow you to finish the setup. Here you'll see the main interface for PFSense. There's tons of options and lots of stuff you can do here. You'll also see that the specifications here are a little different from the computer we built because I fired this up in a virtual machine to show you guys the initial install. And now your PFSense setup is done and it's ready for use. So now that you have PFSense set up, there's endless possibilities. You've opened up a whole new arena of learning about networking. Any plugins and different ways you can optimize and control your network. I'll be doing more videos on PFSense in the future, but I hope this video benefited you in some way. And as always, thanks for watching.